loot boxes, orbs or crates, you know, a surprise box with something special inside, are most of the time super satisfying to open. So I wanted to recreate that feeling and share with you how I created this loot sphere with a gemstone surprise in the middle. And I think it's quite a nice effect. It's a little bit complex, but I'm gonna show you the most important parts in case you wanna recreate your own loot boxes. I love opening these ones, they are so cool. You know who else can open these loots as many times as they want? Well, my patrons, that's right, and I'm very thankful for them, and as always these assets, this entire project is exclusively available on my Patreon page, so make sure to check that out, I left a link in the description. Alright, so let's see how we can loot this. So first I made a few sketches, just trying to figure out how I wanted this loot box to be. I tried with a box, literally, but I wanted something more unique. So I went to a sphere shape, and that quickly gave me a few ideas where it would start in the idle floating, and then once we hover the mouse, it will rise a little bit up, starts cracking up, and shows glow coming from the inside. Finally it rises up and smashes on the ground, showing this gemstone at the end. So with the sphere idea in mind, I made a few sketches so I could come up with a cool orb, and at the end I mostly enjoyed this one. So that's the one I choose it to continue. Then I imported the sketch to Blender and began with the sphere. So I could use this knife tool to create this curvy shape that I sketched. And it turned out to be easier than I thought with this technique. And once the shape was done, I separated with P from the sphere. I gave it a few tweaks and added the mirror modifier, as well as the solidify modifier. And I got this geometry. I cleaned a bit the geometry and proceeded to do another one of these halos with the same technique. For the base where this would be floating, I made something really simple and started with a flat cylinder. And I felt like something was missing in the middle. So I tried with a circle shape, but it wasn't quite right. I don't know why, maybe because it looks like a Pokeball? I felt like the triangle one would be a better fit. So with my loot orb done, I saved this blend file directly to Unity and imported it to the scene and organized this nicely so I could proceed. And at this point I decided to first do the animations of my loot, and that's what I recommend you to do if you are following, because then it's easier to understand what are the effects that you need, right? So I add an animator component and created an animator controller. Then I created a few animations, like an idle animation for when we are not hovering the mouse, then a hover animation that rises the orb up when the mouse is over the object, and a hover loop animation that keeps on playing as long as the mouse is over the sphere. And finally, an open animation that rises up, starts shaking, and smashes on the ground. And I was really satisfied with these animations. But now, to put all of this together, I needed the animation controller. And I create three booleans in the parameters section. The idle, the hover, and the open. Then what happens is that the idle animation is the layer default state, right? It either goes to the hover or to the open. It goes to the hover animation if hover is true. And by the way, I needed to turn off as exit time. But in the case of the hover animation, we want to make sure it has exit time turned on before going to the hover loop, otherwise it cuts directly from the idle animation to the hover loop. And then it only goes to open if open is true from any of the other states. And none of these connections has exit time enabled. Cool. Finally, I just made sure that if we stop at hovering the mouse, on the sphere, 
it goes back to idle, of course. Now for this to work out, I needed a script. On that script, on the update, I first created an array that goes from the camera to the mouse position and then I check it if it hits something. If the ray hits the object that holds the script, then I set the idle to false and over to true. And if I press mouse 1, then I set the open to true. If it doesn't hit the object that holds the script, then I set the idle to true and over to false. And at this point, the loot reward was a very simple function that is called via animation. It basically spawns the loot reward and destroys the loot box, which both are public game objects. As you can see, it's calling the loot reward function right here at the end of the open animation. So here's one of the tests. It starts idling, right? And if I over the mouse, it rises up and then passes to the overlooping part. It can also go back to idle. And once I click it, it proceeds to open up. Cool. With the animations done and the scripting, now I still was missing the loot reward. So I went back to Blender, still in the same file where I created the orb, and proceeded to model a cube into a gemstone. And of course, also created the UVs. The loot reward could be anything you want, of course. I just thought that the gemstone would be cool. So with my loot reward model, I went back to Unity and created an empty game object where I attached my gemstone. Saved it as a prefab because I need to assign it as my loot reward. Right here. Finally, I added the galaxy shader from my previous tutorial, this one, which I think is awesome, and it fits very well this gemstone. Links in the description, or you can find it in my channel. Alright, pretty cool. At this point, yeah, I felt like I needed to spice this up with some cool particle effects. But it was looking very interesting. So, in my loot reward prefab, I create two empty game objects for two particle groups. One to enhance the gemstone and the other one for the impact. So for the impact I add this beam flash with a light. It's very quick, very bright. Then some particles moving around. And they move like that mostly because of the noise module. I'm leaving all of this open in case you want to copy these values, by the way. And then I created this vertical beam. It's fast and it shrinks a little bit vertically while it fades away. And it's simply a texture that I created in Photoshop. Then I have the same texture, but it's all distorted and dissolved. And that's because of a special shader. It's the shader that I used in this tutorial that I made a few weeks ago about a Dragon Ball aura. Go check it out if you want to recreate the shader and learn how to use it. It's in my channel. Then finally I got a shockwave that uses the same shader but with this very simple circle texture to this mesh. The mesh was done in Blender and I started with a circle like this one, extruded to be a disk, a flat disk, and then created the UVs. The rest is me, the rest is me just modeling this shape right here, which is basically a ring if you think about it. And then in Unity I end up with this shockwave when I applied the texture to the shader and the mesh as well. So that's it for the impact. The other group 
is pretty much the same elements but they are looping and attached to the gemstone. And this is how it looked at this point. It was pretty cool, right? This is already a nice looting effect. But I wanted more. So I decided to fracture to totally destroy my orb on impact. How? Well, by using Blender Fracture that you can find on Google in blenderphysics.com you can find the link down here and here's a version for Windows. With this Blender version it's super easy to fracture objects. So I exported the rings and imported them to this Blender Fracture version. And just to show you how simple it is all you gotta do is select the object go to this last tab click on Fracture select the shred count and press execute fracture. And that's it. It gives you a preview of the fracture and then all you gotta do is convert to objects down here. And as you can see we have all of the parts separated. Cool, so I did the same for the other rings. And then I also recreated the sphere with the exact same size, with a solidify modifier, and proceeded to fracture the sphere. Just don't forget to remove the original object because it is still there. Okay, so once I was left with all of the fractured objects, I saved this Blender file directly to Unity. And now for the fracture to work, I had to reapply the material to the fractured object and then create a script. And by the way, if you want to learn more about fracturing objects or destroying objects, I got a tutorial exactly for that on my channel. So, in this script, I added these three public floats, the minimum and the maximum force and the radius. And on start it will execute this function, explode, which is a function that for each transform t in transform, basically for each child attached to this object, I'm gonna cache the rigid body, I'm gonna check if the rigid body is not null, and then in the rigid body add explosion force, with a random force between the minimum and the maximum at the position of the sphere. And that's basically it. I just had to change the name of the function. Then I proceeded to attach the explode script to my fractured orb, add a minimum and a maximum force and a radius, and also select all of the fractured parts and add a rigid body and a mesh collider with convex turn on. The Mesh Collider Convex doesn't work really really that well. You will have to go to the Asset Store and there are plenty of options that recreate really nice colliders. So I saved my prefab and as soon as I press play, this is what happens to the Fractured Orb. Pretty cool, right? And it's very simple actually. Very nice, looking very cool. Then, in my loot box script, I just needed to add the public variable for the fractured version of my loot box. And down here, in the loot reward function, I check it if it's not null, then I instantiate it. But I still wanted to add some cracks, so I went an extra mile and in Blender, I duplicated the existing sphere and with the knife tool, I craved out the cracks shape and separated that geometry. And I repeated this process until I had a few cracks all over my sphere. And for this to work out well, I had to join every crack into one big object so I can control their glow all at once. And I also made sure that the UVs were a little bit bigger. With the cracks being done, I select this edge, 
duplicated and separated from the crack so I could extrude this out. And this will work as the glow of the crack. But it's very important to create a square UV map out of this. With techniques that I've mentioned in other tutorials with the light map pack and follow active quads, otherwise it wouldn't work very well. Okay, so I repeated this process for every crack and at the end I joined them into one object. Back in Unity, all I had to do is drag and drop this to my sphere so it fits perfectly and then take out the cracks in the cracks glow object and since the sphere are the same size, they fit perfectly which is awesome. Finally, with the exact same shade that I have been using I created a new material with these settings and once I started increasing the intensity of the color, I got this effect, which is awesome. Because I can animate it in the respective animations of the hoover loop and when it's opening. And I also did the same thing for the cracked glow, but I created a new material and applied this texture instead. I made a few more small adjustments and this is the end result. And I think it came out pretty well. I think it's awesome actually. And I hope you have enjoyed it. This project, as always, is available on my Patreon page. You can get it there. By supporting me, you keep the channel alive and you get access to many more assets. And guys, thank you all for your support. Every patron really matters a lot to me. And I just want to say a special thank you to the Super Mega Patrons, which are Alejandro, Chris Coy, ForteHeroGames.com, Goblin Black, James Finlay, Juan Mendiola, Ken Lee, Osgur Simsek, Solofo Razafimaelio, Steven Melton, TK, Vera Mountain, and Artem Jim. Thank you all for your support, it really means a lot. So that's it guys, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.